In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. I have just discovered the word that if spoken would expose all of the shapeshifter lizard people that live among us. And that word is caninigan. I don't think it's a real word, but if a person says it and they cannot pronounce it, it means they're a lizard shapeshifter person because uh, they can't they can't pronounce the word right. They kind of growl when they say it and that exposes them. I'm a per real person. I'll say right now, Kininigan, I said it perfectly. I am not a shapeshifter alien. Back in the day when children would go missing in these small towns, people would go around to everyone in the town and make them say this word to figure out if they are the shapeshifter person who stole their kid and brought them underground. Now I have a video to show you of this guy catching one of these lizard people on a live stream. I announce it properly. All right. Okay. Can and then again. Yeah. Say it again. Go ahead. I'll say it again, right? Can and then again. <laughs> Watch. <gasps> oh my God. <sighs> I've never heard of the Kaninigan theory before. This is the first for me, but hey, this is a fun one. So, you know, make some people say the word and see if they're a reptile person. The darkest. The darkest theory is one that Lazar talked about. He said when he was working on these back engineered crafts, what they use us as is vessels. We hold souls and that this is essentially a farm. They develop souls through us. When we die, it transcends and becomes whatever they are in whatever space they exist in. That's what Bob said. Talking about it, that this is one of the crazier stories that has to do with religion that's attached to the UFO phenomena. Some of these people think these things have always been here and they are a part of our history. And that this idea that they're coming here on these metal crafts from another planet is not necessarily the whole picture. That it might be some of that. If we get to the point where we have created intelligence, digital intelligence that exists in some sort of a physical form. You know, they talk about some of the stories in the ancient texts and the Bible. They, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have the words to explain yeah. like what a spaceship is. It's like a chariot in the sky. Ezekiel. This is pretty interesting. I've heard of the soul trap theory. I think that's what it actually falls under. I am starting to wonder, you know, if aliens are real or maybe not even aliens, if we can say that some kind of interdimensional creature that's in another dimension, what if they operate off of our souls? Like that's how they power their crafts, that's how they power their technology. That would explain why Earth was created for living creatures because whoever's off in the distant stars are probably harvesting our souls to energize their planet or their system. That is a pretty interesting theory to me. Both of them, it's dark. It's totally different. I've never in my life seen a rainbow like that. Ever. Look at that. Where are the angels? <laughs> and as you heard Jesse say at the beginning of that video, he had never seen a rainbow like this in his entire life and i agree i analyze videos and photos every day pretty much seven days a week and i have never seen a rainbow that dark before almost looks like a a black rainbow in the sky how weird is that i mean you can see the the bright colors on both sides of the the dark in the center but that is very dark almost black looks like a black rainbow in the sky that's a pretty interesting rainbow. I have seen a rainbow kind of similar as far as it being dark in between two rainbows. Uh, I, I remember looking it up when I seen it because it was so interesting. And I googled uh, dark space in between two rainbows. And it's actually a thing. It's what's called Alexander's Dark Band. And it's that's what that is. I think that's a really cool effect. Uh, I would just do a quick Google search. It'll... It'll explain exactly what it is on a more sophisticated level than what I can explain it as. But there is a scientific theory behind what that is. Space that's different than that. The angelic mind looks at things differently and recognizes that as a conscious being, it has a choice as to which ideas it will represent. Which ideas it will say, okay, this is the way I say it's real. 
The angelic mind realizes that every thought it thinks is an energy pattern that goes into the body and creates part of the manifestation template. Your thoughts affect your DNA template. Your DNA template is the structure that throws energy around in very specific ways that creates the projection of the external hologram that we walk. When you mind control a mass of people like, like has been done here through misinformation for so many generations, you literally have them fence themselves in, like putting an electric fence around themselves, where they can't grow or expand anymore. One of the things we can do for ourselves is to realize our power as a manifester. Now, there's a lot of tricks to that. It's a lot. There's no, you can't just say, okay, well, I'm a manifester. I'm a face of God. I will right now manifest myself a, uh, let's see, shall it be a Maserati or a Toyota? Hmm. Poof, there it is. You know? <laughs> doesn't work that way down here. <laughs> Not yet. In the higher uh, dimensional densities, it actually does, where you find thought form, re, you know, bounces right out into reality. But what happens here is there's a delay process. And your thought form that you're thinking on the three-dimensional level with the conscious mind in 3D gets affected by what programs are in the two-dimensional level of your template and the first-dimensional level of your template. And by the time it pops out somewhere in reality, it usually looks a lot different than what you intended. Sometimes it's directly opposite of what you're trying to make happen. There's a lot of us that hold an idea. We're not supposed to make things happen. We're supposed to just accept what God makes happen. It depends on what God that is. I mean, the God that really created us, that primal, eternal, omnipresent source, wants us to grow up to be like it. Co-creators. It wants to have fun with us. You know, we're you, I'm you, you, yeah, we can all do this together. It doesn't want to limit your ability. We're supposed to learn how to use our mind to direct energy to create the desired results we want. And we can do this. And there's nothing wrong or ungodly with doing this. As long as we do it with a reverence to that source into something I call divine right order. Which means whatever the original intention of God's creation of this time matrix was, and take it all the way up to the time matrix level, whatever the original intention was for here, and I'm part of this time matrix and there's an intention for me too, this is how I want to create. I agree to create within divine right order. And I know that source will help me to create within divine right order. You're not going against the flow of source. You're not doing anything that's going to cause harm if you're working with the concept of divine right order. Then it comes down to, okay, now I have permission. I've given myself permission. And I've definitely said that I'm not going to be a creator that abuses anybody. And I wouldn't want to have so much power that I could actually abuse somebody and not realize it. Some people block their power right there. I'm afraid to have my power back. Somewhere I know I'm a creator and I was a part of some kind of really nasty dramas and I really made stupid choices and people got hurt and I feel terribly guilty still. There's a part of us that carries some of that imprint where we made some bad decisions and political dramas that had to do with Terra and Terra almost blew up. <laughs> That's kind of the scourge of the human DNA imprint. There's some very nasty memories in the DNA imprint where we feel really bad because we made some messes. Forgiveness comes in here. We have to forgive ourselves and say, hey, We'll do better now. <laughs> you need to entrust yourself with the fact that you have the power to create. These are the things you need to do before the fact. You worry about how do I create. First you have to realize you can and God wants you to. Then you have to give yourself permission and trust yourself and know that you're a divine enough being. You have your Christos template. If you choose to create through your Christos template, you can trust your judgment. You don't have to worry that you're going to mess up. You don't have to worry that you're going to create things that you hate or make a mess of your life when you decided to take it instead of just flow with it and let it run over you. You decide to actually try to direct it. Give yourself permission. Know God wants you to. You're supposed to. It's part of our responsibility in becoming conscious go creators. Then we get into, well, how do we do this? If we're allowed to and I give myself permission, what do I do next? <laughs> you realize that everything, every time you think a thought, I'm going to say this over and over because I'm setting an imprint in your, in your mind fields every time I think a thought. I create a scalar wave pattern that sets a blueprint for manifestation. Thoughts are things. And there is a scientific reality behind that. You don't have to know the scientific reality to realize that thoughts are things. And they're extremely powerful. How did God create the time matrix? And everything in it? He thought it. And I say E, if you notice it. It might have sounded like he, but I want to know when, when I refer to God, sometimes it comes out as E. It, it's not a he or a she. I will not say he. I do not refer to a father God. I am not either um, a feminist that's upset with male God figures. I don't say she either. 
we end up with an E in those contexts, just so you know. <laughs> you know? It is a source force power. It is so far beyond polarization and genderization that you know, it becomes funny. So I never, I, when it, it kind of slips off the tongue, you say, you know, God, he, you say, say she, and people go, now that's a funny combination. God, she did what? <laughs> you know, part of your giggles, you know, like, oh, that would be nice for a change, <laughs> you know. But there's a the real important thing about understanding part of the nature of God is realizing it's not male or female. It is an it, and it is a very sacred word. Thank you. Because <laughs> you know? when you get into genderizing God, gender is created by polarity. God's consciousness, the wholeness of God's consciousness is unified, not polarized. That's the physics of it. So it is not genderized. So you want to think when you hit those religions or belief systems that are saying, worship he, he will save me, Father God. You might want to think of the name Anu, because it has to do with the fallen Anu Elohim matrix that decided he was a he and wanted to make sure all the little humans down there, I used to call them puny humans, wanted to worship the good old father God, that if, it was, if they were really nice, he'd take care of them, and if not, he'd flatten them. <laughs> you know? This is where our God concepts came from, from the old twists and the religious doctrines that were given to us by the fallen angelics who were interested in having this Templar. They wanted Earth's Stargate system. They were pretty good at manifesting what they wanted. They've had control over it for quite a long time. But you know what? We have more ability than they do as manifestors. We have 12 strands, which allows us to have the guide that they don't have anymore because they refuse to have it. It's the Christos template, the original thought that the Brenel created. Actually, God created it through the Yannis sound fields, and the Yannis created it through the Brenel, and the Brenel created it through the Christos template. We have the Christos. We have our connection to source available to us if we recognize it's there and begin to open it in our bodies. To manifest something requires a few things. One is a very clear thought. You don't think of what you don't have. You acknowledge a space you want to fill and acknowledge that you have the power to do so. One of the fastest ways to create manifestation is to get yourself into an inner space where you live a little hologram inside your head as if it already was and then take that outside of your head and act that way all day and it seems really weird well I know I don't have a million dollars in the bank you know pretend you do <laughs> just let the emotional feeling run through you get past the block that's stopping you from having that condition now you don't need a million dollars when we come to money, this is the big stumbling block for all the people. And there's a lot of good manifestors in the New Age movement, but the one big thing that everybody tends to trip over is, well, why can't I manifest more money? Money is the symbol of power. And if you mistake the power, if you, you mistake the power for the money, or the money for the power, you don't get it. You need to see that you have the power right now. If you want to go on a vacation to Tahiti, don't have the money. How do I manifest the money? Everybody focuses on making the money happen. Make that money come. The money doesn't come. What you need to focus on is the desired outcome you want. Picture yourself on a beach in Tahiti. Just say, wow, and I have lots of extra power to create other things, too. That power could be a million dollars in the bank, but it doesn't have to be because I know my Christo self will take care of me. If you realize you have a Christo self and all you need to do is work with that self, it will help you bring in the things you need most. It will also help you to see if you're trying to manifest something that is a distraction or a compensation for something you're feeling lacking that really needs healing, not a distraction. You'll have a hard time manifesting those things. If you work with your Christo self by going into that space that we went into in the meditation, you can manifest anything that would be truly meaningful for you. Some people use manifestation power in a way where they manifest all sorts of stuff junk. Sometimes it's expensive junk. Sometimes it's nice junk. It's nice to have like, you know, the manifest junk of a nice house. It's wonderful to have a house. You know? I would, you know, if you don't have a house, work on a house if you want one. What do you guys think about manifestation? This was a very long-winded video. I do apologize for it. I did find it extremely fascinating and I enjoyed listening greatly. But uh, as far as manifestation goes, I am a believer in manifestation, but I think my beliefs in manifestation is a little different than most beliefs in it. It just it's not some magical force that comes out of me. I, I think that I consider manifestation as coming up with something that you want 
and working towards it. Even if it takes two years, it can still be done, and that's my form of manifestation. Like, if I want a new house, like she said, I can manifest that house by spending a lot of my time making money and actually driving myself to get to the house and accomplishing that goal. That's kind of how I see manifestation. I don't really see it as me hoping that it will happen and, and knowing that it'll happen. I just make it happen by ambition, I guess. But I, I really do like the idea of manifestation. And I think that it's a healthy thing for people to have that idea of manifestation so that they have goals and accomplishments to aim towards. But that's just me personally. Let me know in the comments what you think on manifestation and how it works or if you even believe it at all. I'm fucked up. Jimmy, you ain't fucked up. But that shit's getting all the closer to the moon. You see it? Our fuck is fucked up. Our government is what fucked up. Fuck? What was that? Why? Bam. What did it just hit? Look at it. Look at the fucking smoke ring. Are you fucking shitting me? I'm a drunk ass redneck. Videoing some fucking shit. Like what in the fuck is that? The, the reaction is priceless. I genuinely do believe this to be a true video of not knowing what that is in the sky. And it is interesting. I know a lot of people say that things like that is probably due to SpaceX launching satellites or rockets. The thing that comes off of it looking like a ring of smoke it's very interesting that that happens. I do not know what these are. I, I don't honestly know what causes this. I do like to theorize on some things though. Like what if this is some kind of interdimensional or extraterrestrial spacecraft and that ring of smoke is actually a portal from another dimension or a further distance in space to allow other things to come through. That's a fun theory, I think, but it's probably not likely. I don't even know what that was, but I'm slightly disturbed by it, so I'm adding it into this. Yeah, they just transformed into circles right now, right as you're talking. Now they're tra they're now they're not spheres. Let's see the way we Tom. Hey, Stephen Greer missed out, didn't he, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen this before? Nope. This isn't first for me. Anything like it? I have similar video of this from other people. The way we were seeing them when you see them, they think gyro. they're big and they're moving and they have an eye to them. Do you see an eye? Like a bullseye? No. Did you show them the tape already? Did you have the tape? Yeah. See an eye? Out of focus here. Uh, we got major hockey puck activity. I think that one on the left may split in half. It's it seemed like the one on the right split. Now I see lights like this in the night sky where I live, and to me, this looks more like satellite lights, uh, more than like a standard UFO that the movements are way too uniformed and too single filed for it to not be a man-made craft I think personally to me it looks like orbiting satellites I could be wrong leave a comment down below letting me know what you think it is what color are trees trees are brown leaves yeah. are green you grow up you do everything and it's all brown and he goes out to he goes let's just go out to a tree goes out to a tree and he's got a brown like color swatch mm -hmm. thing. Holds it up, doesn't look anything like that. You're right. Yeah. It's 100% gray. Yeah, they're gray. They're mm. gray. 
I don't know. Which is why weird because whenever we draw pictures of trees as kids, they always have us color the trunks as brown. I know. Yeah, but usually in the eight pack of crayons, you don't get a gray. We also always make the sun yellow, but the sun is white. Garrett. Wow. We're going a little deep here this morning. Okay, no, that's interesting. I know. You're right. It that's is the thing. White. He's right. It's white. But why the sun is it, white. It's never been yellow. It's either. never been yellow. Turn everything around, head back home. <laughs> Trees no are need gray. to head to work today. Nope. Work's been done. This is pretty funny. I mean, to be fair, not every tree is brown. There is some gray. There's some white trees. There's even some green trees and tan trees. Where I'm from, we have a lot of pine trees, and they are brown. We have a lot of brown trees where I'm from. So this doesn't necessarily hold true. Not all trees are gray. Every once in a while, a scientific paper gets published that absolutely changes my worldview, the way I see the world when I'm walking around outside. And that's what just happened because the paper was able to prove that plants make noise. But that's not even the most interesting part. Anyways, listen to this. I'll let you hear it first. Tomato sounds that we recorded. So let's talk about a few things. First off, why are we just finding this out? We obviously don't hear it when we're outside, even though they found that it's just about as loud as human speech. It's at a frequency we can't hear, but that doesn't mean that other animals can't hear this. You'll see they mention that right here, and we'll get back to that. So why do plants make the noise in the first place? This study, they looked at like healthy plants. They also looked at dehydrated plants that needed water and plants where they cut the stem. With the healthy plants, they would only make around one noise per hour. But with the unhealthy ones, the ones that were stressed, they would make dozens of sounds per hour. So when we're walking around outside and we see a plant that looks obviously unhealthy like it's dying, it's actually making more noise because it's unhealthy. Now, something else they were able to do, they used AI, and that AI was able to like decipher the noise made. They were able to identify the plant by the noise. So the plants do make noise, but like, what does this actually, like why? What purpose does it serve? We don't know. There are a few hypotheses they mentioned though. First off, like they mentioned, other animals and life forms may be able to hear this. It may somehow guide life to that plant in need. I don't know. They also mentioned maybe the other plants can hear this. Maybe there is something that we don't know about that allows them to hear each other. So I'm about to go on a walk with my daughter, and it's going to be pretty quiet. I'll hear some birds, but it's weird to think about the fact that for some animals, they're hearing an entire different ecosystem in a way. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. They're hearing a different environment than I'll be so quick clarification, this doesn't necessarily prove the plants are communicating with each other. It could just be a byproduct, the sound that is, of some other process within the plant. Either way, I think it's really interesting, though, because, like, some animals probably can hear this. So it's interesting to think of the soundscape. Like, could some of them treat rainforests like we treat the North Star, helping them orientate themselves and know which direction is which? Either way, I think that part of it's fascinating. I always find this extremely interesting because I always wondered if plants could communicate with each other and or with the environment around them. And it's pretty interesting to know that we're getting better technology to actually be able to hear the plants. It always makes me wonder, you know, what they sound like. I wish that I could hear them sometimes, but it probably would be really overwhelming because you would just probably hear a whole bunch of plants and trees around you screaming all the time. But it's a very interesting thing. I enjoy the understanding of the plants. And maybe one day, scary enough, we might be able to communicate to plants in a normal fashion for us, for them to understand, and for us to understand them. And I think that'll be really cool. But it'll be really scary because how are we going to treat that in the future? Are we going to treat it like how vegans don't like to eat meat because, you know, it's kind of inhumane for the animal but what if plants had a voice and could tell you things or you could hear them scream it would be kind of the same concept it'd be kind of scary so i'm currently in the middle of arizona trying to prove that skinwalkers don't exist i found these weird cliff dwellings on the side of the mountain after crossing a river and decided to crawl inside and see what i'd find inside as soon as i got inside i was greeted by bat guano scorpions and snakes so i did the logical thing decided to go deeper and immediately as i did i started to hear this 
I tried climbing deeper inside this cave to try to find the source of that noise, but didn't find anything, so I decided to leave and find a different cave to go inside to see if I could find something else. There's a lot of stories of weird things happening here at night, and well, even during the day, so I decided to keep going deeper and see if I could find some other caves, except the only problem was it was kind of treacherous trying to cross these caves. There's a lot of evidence of natives living in these, which means that there's a high probability of coming across a skinwalker. If you don't know what skinwalkers are, it's basically folklore about someone that made a deal with, well, something bad and did something vile that allows them to turn into something uh, like an animal or something, and then they haunt people and try to them. So being in these caves completely alone with no cell reception is honestly kind of a terrible idea, but we're trying to prove that skinwalkers don't exist, so well, that's what we have to do. The only thing that's weird about these caves is when I was approaching them up on the cliffside, I saw what looked like a raven watching me. Something about it just seemed abnormal and weird, but that's not going to stop me from going further and further into this canyon. Now that I'm several miles back into this canyon, even deeper into these cliff dwellings, I decided it was time to do this. Skinwalker, skinwalker, skinwalker. Immediately I heard this voice, but luckily it sounds far away. Whatever it is, it sounds far away, but I think it might be in this cave, so I'm going to go inside. I really enjoy these types of videos, not necessarily because of the skinwalkers, but I really like watching cave diving and splunking. It's very anxiety-inducing, but I enjoy it a lot. So I took that to heart, and I went to Egypt, and I laid in the sarcophagus. The Great Pyramid is the Pyramid of Earth Life Force, and that pyramid, he claims in the Emerald Tablets, to have been built by him. And then he challenges the reader to lay in the sarcophagus, and the mysteries will be revealed to you. So I took that to heart, and I went to Egypt, and I laid in the sarcophagus. I've spent 13 nights in the Great Pyramid now, and it has been some of the most transcendent experiences of my entire life. What happens? Well, first of all, you realize that the Great Pyramid is like a musical instrument. As soon as you go in, there's a thing called the antechamber. You go past the great step, which is the final step under the apex of the Great Pyramid. And then you go through this little corridor that's a crouch space that's about 39 inches high. And as you walk through there, there's two little antechambers. There's a very small antechamber, and then there's a larger antechamber. So the antechamber that's really small, it's only wide enough that my shoulders will fit inside of it. So you stand there, and I can fit probably with about one inch clearance on both sides. If you find the right resonance frequency in there, which is 100 117 hertz, right? Which mm -hmm. the Great Pyramid is 11 over 7. That's the base to the height. So 117 and 11.7 squared is 137. And that's the number of times the sarcophagus will fit inside the king's chamber. And that's a very important mathematical constant, which is called alpha. And that math constant is the separation between light and darkness called the electron coupling constant. If you stay, if you go in through this little crawl space, it's only 39 inches high, about seven or eight feet into it, you can stand up and you find this resonance frequency of 117 hertz was just like you're hearing just like you hearing that it or feeling you it feel it because then the whole chamber you're standing in there it goes Wah. it's like right, this resonance right. goes Wah, and it shakes the hell out of you and you go whoa mm -hmm. what is this and then when you lay in the sarcophagus you can resonate at the same frequency that same humming sound mm -hmm. Just like that. You don't have to do more and you don't have to do it louder. And once you do, if you're laying in the sarcophagus, just as if you're standing up in the antechamber, you feel the entire pyramid's force come on like an engine. It starts going wah, 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 like super loud, like super loud. This was a pretty interesting one to me because it got me thinking, what if that's why they worshipped cats? Maybe they based their science and technology around how cats purred because cats have a certain frequency that helps benefit the cats. What if Egyptians or people of the pyramids also utilized that kind of frequency and technology? It's hard to explain, but there might be something to that. Am I the only one that thinks about how cats literally have superpowers? Like these things were worshipped for a reason. For starters, cats literally have the ability to heal themselves. When they purr, they emit what is known as a healing frequency. This healing frequency not only heals themselves, but it also provides therapeutic medicine for humans. Cats can also literally defy gravity. Cats have something called a writing reflex that allows them to determine the difference between up and down, even when they're mid-flight. This is why they're able to twist their bodies mid-air and make sure that they will always just land on their feet. And yeah, when they do that, it literally slows their descent. Like the momentum of their fall slows down over time. Like what? But nothing 
is more impressive about the domestic house cat than their vertical leap. Cats have the insane ability to jump not two, not three, but six times their height. Now it's near impossible for us to truly wrap our heads around how crazy that is. So this is gonna be the best that I can do. Michael Jordan currently holds the record for the highest vertical leap, jumping a whopping four feet into the air. But if Michael Jordan had the ability to jump six times his height, he would have the ability to jump 40 feet into the air without warning, without training, without even having a running start. This is kind of what I'm talking about with cats. I, I think maybe the Egyptians were onto something with beetles and cats. There was something about those two things that really involved their technology, I feel like. I'm taking a video because nobody's ever gonna believe this. I'm at the store grocery shopping. Look at this egg. I found it because I always check my eggs in the milk cart or in the cartons, not the milk carton, what the heck. Look at that. Oh, that is so weird. I'm going to put it right back where I found it and I'm never going to touch it again. How about that? So, from someone that knows about raising chickens, that probably was a calcium deficient egg. That happens a lot on the farms if you have chickens that aren't properly fed and they have like a bad calcium deficiency. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know if I would want to buy that egg either because that's that's not very appealing looking. I'm being told, I'm not sure how to put that into words, that this is all a virtual game. That if you clear out your energy, you can control the experience 100%. Now, before this happened, I woke up in a mood, depressed at life, depressed at people. People have failed me. People are mean. I failed them. We hurt each other. We do horrible things to each other. Who would bring a child into this world? You know, like, you know, all of that. I hate people. Maybe if I just don't talk to people for a little while and I just read my book, you know, trying to figure it out, but going into it saying, I don't want to be here anymore. Like this place sucks and I can't figure it out. And I, I'm really upset. And I didn't ask for clarity, but I, the clarity came because I've been asking because the body does feel like a limitation, especially my body. I don't talk about it a lot, but I, I don't have good health. <laughs> I have uh, weakness fatigue. Last night, I thought my dog was laying next to me because he could sense that I was dying in my sleep. Anyways, I have like extreme fatigue that I don't talk about because I don't want to add energy to it. I'm just barely making it some days, even though, you know, I have eyelashes on and I look somewhat put together. Anyways, this is fucked up. There's no way that this can just be a virtual game that's that's responding to you that's very, very real. And then I go, okay, okay, what about the others? Because, again, I'm making videos because I want to help people. I swear to God, why can't I help them? Because there is no them, because they're in another universe where I can't even touch them, where they're having their simulation happen to them perfectly, and I can't tell them, hey, it's not fucking real, it's a game, and you have to become aware of your energy and your beliefs, and you have to clear them out completely, and it's like so tricky, it's so tricky. They're just, it's not real, and they're going to respond to what you believe. That's it. They're going to respond to what you believe. Like literally, this is a walk into a virtual world, a virtual VR system, and the rules are what you believe happens around you. That's how good it is. It's so finite. It's responding to your energy. Literal. It can be set up this way. We're already doing it now. You can... um google stuff with your mind with a computer interface and the computer interface is really cute it's behind the ear we already have a computer interface it's called the brain bashar said it in a video recently he said well when we get robotics that mimics the computer interface like a brain it's because the brain is a computer interface between your higher self your higher self anyways last night i was like okay how do you like leave the body or not feel so trapped by it. And it was telling me you need to gain awareness. Again, I don't really know what that means. I'm aware of my body, but how did I get here? And why am I this character? This is just a computer game. 
I, I really am dis- disappointed that I can't help people. That there are no other people. That another me who is more advanced or less advanced is just in her own little world that's perfectly reflecting back to her. And I can't shout to her, hey, I'm in this universe over here and we're figuring it out and it's not real. Just fix your belief systems and everything has to, everything has to respond to you. Fuck, that's what fucking Jesus knew. I don't care anymore. People aren't real. That sounds crazy, huh? There's only one entity in the universe. Another theory is that the people are real, but you're just kind of uh, perfectly placed together throughout history. So it seems like, ah, like you all perfectly, like we all perfectly add up. So I could help people, but I'm really, this was already calculated a long time ago. And my awakening was placed right here. All these people around her are perfectly matching to her and she's matching to them and they piss her off and she pisses them off and then they're ready to awaken and she is and you both awaken at the same time and it all just adds up like some mathematical equation. And I added up all the characters before I even came in here. I said, this character adds up, this character adds up, all these storylines add up. Okay. And let's play it out in a third dimensional form. I'm not a huge believer in the simulation theory. I have such a hard time believing that because if we were in a simulation, I feel like being that it's such a perfectly running simulation that I mean because we look at video games and simulated stuff today and it's not perfect even when we get it pretty darn good it's not perfect and I don't think that it I don't think that it ever will be personally but life in its form is perfect there is the ability to think for oneself and I just feel like if we were in a simulation the program would not even allow us to believe that we're in a simulation. It would be breaking the fourth wall and someone would try to figure out how to hack past it and get out of it. So that really is what leads me to believe we're not in one because if we were, it would not even allow us to believe that we were in one. But that could be completely wrong. Leave a comment down below on what you think it could be. If you think simulation theory is real. Or do you kind of agree where I'm going with it? Before you call me crazy. Before you think that I'm crazy. Please just listen to me. Has anybody else experienced this? Because I really need to know. Anybody else that is highly intuitive. Highly empathic. Highly spiritual. Anything like that. um, Clairvoyant. Like anything that has to do with that, have y'all noticed the shift in people's physical appearance? As somebody who has always been connected to the other side, I've always been able to see things beyond the normal. I have always been able to use my discernment within that, like walking into rooms and getting bad vibes or walking into a circle of people and being like, "Mm, I I don't like that person. Like, or even just coming face to face with somebody and just being like, "Mm, I don't like that. But over like the last two months, and I don't know if it's something that I did personally, like within my own like awakening, or if this is something that's happening to other people and that's why I need to know. But there have been people that I literally cannot look at like used to like whenever I would come around somebody and their vibe would be very negative or feel very just off to me like you wouldn't really able to I wouldn't be able to like sense it in their appearance but like these people literally almost don't even look human to me like and I know that I sound batshit crazy I know that I do and I'm not talking about all of these things that people are talking about they're seeing like I 
I literally just like don't know how to explain this like and it's in the eyes more than anything and anybody that's spiritual will tell you that or religious or whatever it's in the eyes you can sense when somebody is a bad person just by looking at them in the eyes but when it is it's gotten so severe that like I literally can't even look at these people it's like they're it scares me. Like, it's stuff that kind of, like, keeps me up at night. Like, I'll just lay there and think about it. Like, I've even come across videos on, on TikTok, like, and it's, like, as much as, like, I want to watch it or I have, I've watched this person before and it's, like, I like their content but didn't really care for them. Like, it's, like, I can't even, I can't even look at it because, like, just the way they look initiates fear into me and I just want to make sure that I'm not crazy and that this is actually happening to other people because even my kids have been making comments and my my daughters specifically are very 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 intuitive and they are very open but to the point where they've even been making and I've never said anything like this to them but even we were at, I was at Walmart, okay, like, um, two weeks ago with my daughter, and she was like, did you see that person, and I was like, I was like, yeah, wh what do you mean, and, and I tried to just kind of play it off, and she was like, did you see the way they looked, and I was like, yeah, like, you mean, like, just a bad vibe, and she was like, yeah, but, like, they looked evil, and, like, she just, and I had never said anything like that to her to, like, even initiate that thought into her brain. So, like, I need to know that this is happening to other people. Okay, love y'all. Bye. I don't necessarily doubt that she has some kind of intuition and premonition about people and their characters and things like that. But I do have some doubts that she's never brought up this around her kids. Anyone that has these kind of things, I'm sure, is going to get brought up around their kids for their kids to have the same style of reactions and habits that their parents do and i'm not trying to be that guy that like points their finger and says oh you know you shouldn't have tattoos all over you and things like that but where i'm from if you're covered in tattoos you're gonna get some pretty odd looks and that could be interpreted as not a very nice individual or a evil individual. I'm not saying that that's the case, but seeing the tattoos like on the neck, on the wrists, everywhere like that can provide a poor judge of character. Even for myself, I'm potentially judging this character based off of the tattoos. Not saying that it's wrong or anything, they look great, but it can bring unwanted attention, and that much unwanted attention could potentially psychologically mess with someone to the point where they think everyone or everything is evil because of the looks that they received through their life. But I don't know, maybe she has some kind of psychic ability and she can truly see the good or the bad in people. And I'm just being the douchebag that's calling out, you know, how she's got tattoos and probably gets a lot of eye attention from that in a negative way. Let me show you something super interesting. This is the World Submarine Cables Map. I want you to think of South America as one, Africa as two, and Australia as three. Notice how there are no cables from here to here or here to here. You might ask, why is that important? Here's why. The reason you will never see these cables connected is because look how far the distance is from one to two and two to three and the vast distance from one to three. But Ryan, what about these cables here? Oh yeah, you mean the short distance right here? But you might ask yourself, Ryan, why is that important? Over 99% of the world's internet traffic, including international phone calls and data transfers, rely on cables. Not satellites, cables. Y'all, pull up any map of sea cables and you will see that none of these touch because we live on a flat geocentric plane just like the word of god says in revelations 29 and they talking about the angels went up on the breadth of the earth 
What is that? That is Strong's G4114. Breadth meaning plateaus has a root word, breadth, suggesting great extent. Let's look up this root word plateaus. G4116. G4116 says plateaus spread out flat. Spread out flat. The Bible is true, and you have been deceived your entire life. It's time to wake up, repent of your sins, and know that Jesus Christ is the only one that is truth. And his word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But the Bible, the word of God, shall never pass away. This was pretty interesting. I have definitely seen the mapping of cables on different maps before. And it is interesting. But the only thing that I didn't really quite understand why he brought up in this video were the satellites providing internet. Satellites don't provide internet. They receive signals from the internet or basically they receive signals from fiber optic cables hooked up to an antenna beaming. So I don't understand why he brought that up necessarily, but everything else was like really interesting. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this pretty much every day. As you probably have noticed by the length of this video, it's a pretty long video. And mainly I just wanted to make this video a little longer than normal because I wanted to stop for a moment and say thanks for everyone that's been a part of this channel. I know this is kind of random and coming out of nowhere, but I do think that it is due time for a true thank you of all of the people that subscribe to this channel. I have over 2,000 subscribers at the moment and I just started this channel two months ago, a little over two months ago. And to me, that is awesome. I think that that's pretty amazing. Like I would have never expected people to really be on this channel commenting their theories and just getting along with each other in the comments. Of course, we do have some bad apples from time to time, but overall, I think the community and everyone that supports this channel is amazing. And I cannot, I cannot thank you enough for the time spent watching my videos and, and commenting in the comments. And we all just have something relatable. And it's just really been a fun time. And I just wanted to stop and say thank you for all the support that you've provided to this channel. I, I can't. I can't even begin to tell you how awesome of an experience this has been so far, and it's only getting better. I think that we're getting new people every day. Everyone's really awesome, and I have a bunch of people in the comments that just really seem to be super genuine and are very interesting and tell some amazing stories about what they've gone through and their experiences and their beliefs, and I enjoy it a, a lot. It's so fun, and I just wanted to say thank you again I cannot tell you how much it really means to me to have such a supportive community come and check out my videos pretty much every day. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, and I hope that you have the best day you've ever had.